Okay, hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, this is uh, kind of my first time at GBC in Kong, but I did a virtual uh, presentation in the, uh, probably last year, I think. So it's, I always want to come to GBC, and so here we are. It's, um, in this talk, I'm talking about uh, cloud native uh, Java application development uh, with uh, the open standard and uh, micro profile, and also get it deployed to Kubernetes, uh, to Open Liberty and then Kubernetes. So, it's, it's, uh, so in the beginning, I will go through the concept, and then I follow by a live demo. Hopefully, the Wi-Fi will do good here. This, um, also, this book, uh, this, this session is based on the book I published last year. This is, uh, uh, is uh, over here. So the Practical Cloud Native Java Application Development um, with Micro Profile. So it's on Amazon, so you can check it out. So there's an a, a, yeah, example to explain all the standard uh, and then uh, yeah, uh, tell you how to use them. OK, let's get started. So the first, let's find out what is cloud native. I know it's kind of we talk about microservices. Is that uh, cloud native only me microservices? Is 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 monolith is nowhere to be cloud native? Uh, actually, is is not cloud native means like uh, this application native to, to the cloud. Is it could be microservices or could it be modular monolith? Remember, monolith is not, not evil. So it's, if it's a kind of native to the cloud, you can just deploy, deploy to the cloud and still be able to work. You just add a little bit of quality services, and it will, it will be working fine. So it's, uh, what is what cloud de uh, demand? Like uh, when we talk about is native to the cloud. Basically, if you deploy things to the cloud, and uh, remember all the memories, uh, all the, uh, the, the, the minutes, the millisecond, all cost money. So your application needs to be small, and also it needs to be running fast. And in this session, like uh, we talk about uh, just uh, Java-based. We are all Java developers. Anybody not a Java developer here? OK. So that's good. <laughs> so it's, uh, anyway, if you're not a Java developer, we we'll try to com com convert you to be the Java de developer. <laughs> uh, so it's, um, first, if you are a Java developer, so basically you need to find the JVM. So it's, um, we know the uh, Oracle hotspot. Anybody know OpenJ9? OpenJ9? Yeah, if you don't know OpenJ9, check it out. It's a completely open source. It's uh, under Eclipse Foundation. Actually, we did uh, like a benchmark with um, uh, OpenJ9 and Hotspot. Like, uh, it's a memory footprint and also startup. It's really, really, uh, I mean, uh, good. It's a more, uh, it's a, has a better performance than uh, Hotspot. So check it out. So it's, um, we got uh, like a JVM sorted. What about your application? What do I mean is a kind of cloud native application? So I describe the cloud native application with the following uh, like uh, characteristics. The first thing is need to be configurable and also need to be uh, like a restful. Is there's a common like um, communication and uh, for the applications? Is uh, however nowadays is uh, you could either use messaging or you could uh, use like uh, REST. So it's uh, uh, like uh, REST is still quite dominating. But remember, like uh, it's much easier to create uh, like uh, stateless. Uh, I mean uh, services so that uh, Kubernetes can directly destroy it and uh, start a new one. And also, it need to be resilient. So later on, I do a demo to like uh, demonstrate like uh, it's very like uh, bad coded um, application is a uh, backend and how can you improve your own uh, services so that uh, you you can deal with a, a flaky backend uh, and also is uh, when we deploy to the to the cloud it need to be uh, self explanatory uh, and uh, can be discovered and also it need to be secure because some. Uh, uh, microservice contains some sensible information. You need to always secure them. And uh, this is uh, the, the following one is monitorable. 
Because once you deploy your application to the cloud, if something goes wrong, you should uh, immediately find out which one is not working. So it need to be uh, so need to have some monitorable data. Besides, you can use Grafana and uh, create queries. If something is uh, under load, under stress, you can like, uh, deal with it before the uh, disaster happens. And finally, it needs to be intelligent. It can communicate with the cloud infrastructure so that it like, uh, can tell the cloud whether this service is ready to s receive the um, request or not. So this is a kind of characteristic uh, about uh, cloud native applications. As you can see, if you have monoliths, you can you can convert them to be cloud native applications. If you you think about uh, like uh, how how can fulfill this uh, requirement. Uh, however, you might be thinking now you are doing application now is uh, suddenly you have a, a long list uh, to deal with, and luckily. Um, a macro profile comes to rescue. Anybody know macro profile? Okay, so if you don't know macro profile, check it out, it's really easy. Uh, later on, I will do a demo to show you. So it's, a com it's under Eclipse Foundation, so having the, uh, like a, a lot of members, including IBM, Red Hat, and Jack, Ajag, Oracle, uh, Tommy Tribe, Ajag, Atlanta Jack, for Jisoo and recently Microsoft also joined. So it's, uh, uh, it's all the operation is under these uh, working groups. And also it's a completely community driven. We welcome everybody to get involved. So if you have any like uh, interest or any free time, uh, come on board. So we would love your contribution. There's a lot of implementations about macro profile. So it's, uh, this is the kind of people always ask me questions. Uh, be, what's the difference between Spring and macro profile? So here is a major difference. Is it from functionality point of view? It's very similar. The bigger difference is there's uh, so many implementations for macro profile. So if you use these APIs, so you can freely move around among the implementations. So if some companies kind of stop with supporting it, and so many other other companies, uh, other applications, uh, servers, or runtime, be able to like um, help you out. So you can move your application without any problems. So that's why it's called standard. So here is a busy timeline. So it's a kind of it started in 2016. Now it's a uh, October, uh, like, uh, like uh, uh, December last year, we released uh, 5.0. So between 4.1 and 5.0 is pretty much just a Jakarta namespace uh, change. So basically, it's a previously it depend on Java, uh, Java EE package, now depend on the Jakarta um, package. Anybody know Jakarta? Jakarta EE? Okay. If you don't know Jakarta EE, there's, there's um, booth in the, in the, you know, over there, and also there's a talk from Eva tomorrow, so check it out. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, another standard. Anyway, this is a bigger picture about macro profile. So macro profile has like uh, two type of different uh, uh, kind of the, uh, specifications. On the left, we grouped uh, together with these five Jakarta uh, EE specs. And uh, these blue ones is all from Micro Profile. So this is uh, all together. We release is uh, like a 4.1, it's called Platform Release. And this is a standalone. This two is uh, to create uh, um, a re reactive uh, micro uh, services. And then this is kind of the, uh, like, uh, uh, a synchronized programming model and uh, for the context of propagation, so this is based on the GraphQL. This is uh, like a microservice transaction. So it's, uh, uh, in this talk, I just talk about all these uh, kind of platform uh, releases. So the late I use the micro profile for the one ex is an uh, example. So let's uh, uh, sit back to, for example, you have a task. You want to create uh, a cloud native applications. How can you get started? So what kind of tools do you have? So it's very simple. Anybody know JaxRS? 
JAXS, if you know that, you can just uh, do it now. You can create a JAXS application. That's microservices. That's cloud native applications. If you don't know, so basically you just need two classes. Application, you click create a class application, and then you create a, uh, like a JAXS resources. You can use a get and a put and uh, uh, and post and delete and etc. So this is pretty much a standard uh, uh, REST, right? So the, with these two up, uh, two classes, you immediately go to endpoint slash uh, system and slash like uh, properties. So this is uh, all the other uh, like uh, application can directly invoke it. So next one, like um, after I have done that, uh, like uh, the next one is polish it up. So how can you create a loosely coupled application? So basically, you use the context and dependency injection. Anybody know the um, uh, CDI? OK. Um, if you don't know CDI, anybody know Spring, uh, uh, Spring Auto Wired? Yeah? So that's the equivalent. So, it's, um, so basically, here, you use inject, direct inject, um, object into another uh, variable and etc. And uh, here is a directly translate uh, to, to, to spring injection. This will be auto-wired. So that's the same. So next thing is uh, we also talk about uh, how can you like um, um, uh, transfer these messages uh, on the wire. So the, what's the format? So the most uh, like uh, uh, adopted format is the JSON. So in micro profile, we use the JSON B or JSON P directly dealing with all this kind of the object serialization and deserialization. So here, you know, this is the JSON uh, type, and then with this, you just need to create a, a type inventory list, and then you just uh, JSON B directly like. Uh, uh, serialize this object and uh, into, uh, yeah, and put on the wire. On the receiving side, also JSON B implementation directly deserialize it into the type. So next, uh, this is kind of the one uh, cloud native application. Like uh, basically, you will need uh, multiple cloud native application. And then the second thing is uh, how can you connect them? So you will use the micro profile rest client. So with the micro profile rest client, also is a type safe client. So basically, what you can do, for example, you want to call the backend. The backend is uh, has an interface like a get properties, is a get operation, and then in the service A, you directly create a, uh, this interface, the uh, system client, and uh, just annotate it with register rest client, and then the implementation of the micro profile rest client directly creates uh, like a CDI bin. So uh, you can directly use at inject rest client and inject to a variable. And then you can directly call default rest client to get uh, properties. You can invoke the backend. And you might ask, how, can, how do you know where the backend is? So we use the config. So this is a fully qualified class name for the system client. Like that, and then slash mp rest slash URL. This is your backend. So the, when the service A trying to uh, call service B and then find out this and directly call into service B. So this is kind of how can you connect them. So next thing is uh, how can you uh, document these um, um, microservices. So when we talk about uh, documentation, immediately you will think about uh, Swagger. Anybody know Swagger? Yeah, and also open API. Okay, so micro profile directly adopt them, adopt uh, open API. If I look at, you show this one, you know, this is a, is a open API output, it's a swagger, right? And also, uh, like uh, we expose the endpoint, uh, like a uh, host uh, and the port and slash open API, you get this. And then in Open Liberty, we do a, uh, also, another endpoint UI also integrated with the Swagger UI, so you can directly like invoke uh, the endpoint directly from UI. So, anybody know Open Liberty? Open Liberty? Okay, if you don't know, uh, check it out in the Open Liberty.io. Is uh, later I will demo it to you. We see very easy to use. 
OK, the, f the, the following thing is about how I talked about uh, secure microservices, right? So a lot of time, you will need to secure microservices. When we talk about security, immediately we will think about uh, um, OpenID Connect, OAuth, and JWT. There's no surprise here. In micro profile, we, we have a micro profile JWT. So basically, we build on top of JWT by adding like uh, two custom claims. One is, is user information, the other one is groups. So it's uh, basically, and we also use the micro, pro, uh, we also use the Jakarta like uh, uh, security, like a rules allowed. We use this one can protect uh, this backend. So in this case, this is the backend only allow admin or user access the kind of the, uh, this this uh, uh, method. So in, uh, in for this one, if a backend is secured and uh, you will want uh, like a JWT token contain the user information and group information, so that a backend receiver knows whether it can allow you access or not. So this is the beauty of the micro profile JWT. So it's the when you transfer this token to the backend, it will uh, uh, include the user information and also group information. So that's the backend be able to uh, uh, yeah, verify whether this user is allowed to access it or not. The, second, the following one is uh, how can you create a resilient microservices? So for example, like I create a microservice, so however, I, um, yeah, I call into another cloud native applications. So maybe I call a weather app. The weather app may be sometimes a, a, a flaky, right? Is that I need to, uh, is kind of the, um, either contact the backend to fix the problem. However, probably is I couldn't uh, influence them, so I have to fix my own code. So it's, uh, in this case, like, um, uh, micro profile fault tolerance directly give you some APIs. It give you like a retry and a circuit breaker and also the um, uh, timeout and also bulkhead. Anybody know bulkhead, this pattern? Yeah, so bulkhead, if you don't know the bulkhead pattern, so basically is kind of limit how many concurrent requests to your application. So also the final thing is the fallback. So this fallback is very powerful. And uh, you might think it's like, uh, if you know service mesh is still, it has a lot of like, uh, patterns, like uh, retry, circuit break, uh, timeout. However, it couldn't do fallback. Because a fallback will need the business logic. For fallback, basically you say, if this one, you have tried all the things, but still couldn't work, you can say, okay, Instead, if this doesn't work, call this, uh, uh, invoke the fallback, forget this, um, this method instead. The, fo the, the following thing is about externalized configuration. Do you know a 12 factor? Anybody? Okay. So if you don't know 12 factor and uh, check it out, if you do cloud native application, or do microservices, you, you need to understand a 12 factor. The third factor is about uh, externalize your configuration. Why is it so important? Because if you change the value, you, you need to frequently change the value of the configuration. You don't really want big your, like, a value inside the application. Every time and you need to change the value, you have to repackage the application. That's not the cloud native application. So you have to externalize the, uh, the configuration. So for this one, micro profile provides uh, uh, like uh, uh, methodologies, like uh, it has uh, uh, this annotation, like uh, add inject configure properties. And then this configure property is in main uh, maintenance. And then you can specify uh, uh, specify it anywhere, like uh, as an environment variable, system property, or inside application, micro profile dash config dot properties, or anywhere in the database or something. And one thing is with the micro profile config is all this one, we call it config sources. They all have an ordinal number associated with. So the value with the highest ordinal uh, uh, number will, will, will be the winner. So in this case, this one wins. So this variable will be a, a, a get a value true. 
Okay, so that's a quick uh, run through about uh, how can you create a cloud native applications. So next thing is about um, once you have this one, you cloud, uh, have done your cloud native applications, the next thing is about uh, like uh, considering the monitor aspect, right? So it's, uh, with that, it's a micro profile health. So basically, it's, uh, it has um, uh, three annotations, readiness, liveness, and, uh, and a startup. So basically, it also three endpoints, slash health, slash ready, and slash live, live and slash started. So basically, directly uh, mirror into the Kubernetes uh, liveness, readiness, and startup check. So the next one is the metrics. So I mentioned the metrics, the application metrics. So you can just uh, use the, uh, the micro profile metrics uh, annotation, like uh, time, the simply time, the meter, the counted. So add uh, any over above, uh, like uh, application metrics uh, for you so that you can directly uh, push to Prometheus and et cetera. So the next one is um, macro profile open tracing. For this one, actually, at the moment, we are doing a macro profile telemetry. As we know, open tracing and open sensors merged. So this is uh, currently is uh, we are going to uh, uh, put into the maintenance mode and uh, replace with uh, telemetry. However, the major thing is uh, still the same. So for macro profile metrics, so all the JXRS method invocation automatically, like, uh, 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 traced. So basically, it's all the invocation traced, all the kind of all the uh, application, all the spans linked together to create one single trace. If you want to add some additional trace, you can use this annotation add trace uh, for any method, not JXRS method, not like get, um, put, and etc. How can you get started uh, yourself, create a cloud native applications using micro profile? So basically, we have a few plugins. So uh, you can either use this start the micro profile IO, create application, and download and uh, input into your IDE. If you're using uh, VS Code, the, like I am, later on I will demo it. So you can install the micro profile extension pack. If you use the IntelliJ, and you can install the micro profile starter. So all the backend is the same as the micro profile starter. So it's, uh, if you use Open Liberty, you uh, go and check it out in the uh, like uh, Open Liberty .io. You start the Open Liberty .io. You can directly create a, a, like a, a cloud native applications using uh, Jakarta and micro profile uh, APIs. So Next thing I just uh, talk about quickly about uh, like uh, how can you package your application and destroy uh, uh, deploy to the to the cloud. So uh, again, no surprise. You can either use a uh, Podman or Docker can directly like uh, like uh, um, package it and then uh, push it to Kubernetes and etc. Uh, in the next few slides, I talk about uh, the uh, interactions between micro profile and uh, Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, uh, you can create a config map, so like this. And then uh, in your deployment YAML file, you can ma map the config map to the environment variable, for example, here. Remember, macro profile, all the environment variables are available to be injected via macro profile config. So here, you can inject the greeting, and immediately this the variable will get a video value ha hello. So for the health, earlier I said uh, actually you have uh, three endpoints, slash health, slash ready, slash health, slash live, and slash started. So like a readiness, you can directly here, you use the HTTP get and slash health, slash ready, and then specify how often you need to be checked. So you, you can see is now immediately you have the programming model available to you. So with that, let me quick let me go to a demo to show you how can you uh, from zero, like uh, uh, how can you create an um, application. Interesting, the focus.
So I use the VS Code here. So I have uh, the um, um, VS Code micro profile extension uh, like uh, uh, installed. So the macro profile generates a new application, and then I just uh, change the cloud native for Java, and then version I select uh, Open Liberty, and then I go uh, do Maven. If you anybody uh, Maven Maven developers, uh, Grido. Okay, it uh, looks like a half and a half. But anyway, here uh, I want to demonstrate uh, like uh, the uh, two applications working together. I want to generate a health. Uh, I also, I want to demonstrate a security here. And I want to put it into the demo. to the current project. So immediately here, like uh, I create two applications. Is the one is the service A. Can you see it? Do you want it need to be a bigger? Bigger or not? Or is it fine? So so basically is uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, uh, like uh, this is the service A, the client directly call into the service B. So this is the kind of the service B's uh, uh, interface, do something. Uh, with that, actually, uh, I want to start uh, the service A and service B in the Liberty demo mode. So demo mode means uh, if I'm doing things, if I change things, and uh, it will automatically see the change and uh, restart my application. So you can see the changes straight away. So where well, is the running? So it's, uh, let me quickly show you, like uh, in the service B, uh, I have uh, like uh, two endpoints. One is uh, kind of do something. It's very easy, just to do something, uh, re re process the parameter value. Uh, the other one is uh, protected. So I use the rules allowed, protected, so this is protected. If you don't have any uh, sufficient uh, 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 like access right, you won't be able to access it. So it's, uh, uh, again, so it's, uh, as you can see here, like uh, this uh, annotated with register register client, and then uh, I can directly inject a register client, and then I will call it. Um, let's, uh, it's started, let's go to the, um, here. So it's uh, in the, is uh, I know it's uh, live on the local host 9080, so that's the uh, default uh, uh, default code. Is because here is my application, so it's uh, live on 9080. So the endpoint, um, so the endpoint here, so basically is uh, is a resident client, so it's uh, is a call into the backend. Uh, let me first demonstrate to you. Like, uh, actually, I want to say hello, uh, JBCNCon. Uh, however, I want to just inject the conference. So I just do a, a at inject at config uh, uh, property. I want to just say name equals uh, conference. So here, we'll do a string conf. So, and uh, here I will just uh, say hello, uh, conf. Here. So, if I save it, so I got an uh, error straight away to saying, uh, uh, like, uh, this uh, configure property. Uh, conference is not defined, uh, couldn't find uh, anywhere. So basically, the config pro couldn't, and also you got a warning also uh, tell you it's not being defined. So now I can define it. 
I can directly define here. Uh, if I say conference, I just say GBC in conf. Save this one. As is happy now, see the start is uh, kind of updated. So here, a process, so it, here it says uh, hello GBC in conf. Obviously, you see is this is testing, uh, you need the space uh, somewhere. So I can just uh, uh, update here, add a space. So now it's kind of the, you see, okay, is this really invoke the backend or not? So um, the next I want to just show you, I just uh, uh, put a bug in the backend in order to save time. I just uh, like uh, copy this um, snippet here. Uh, and then I make uh, the backend, uh, uh, I mean, not uh, flaky and sometimes not working. Uh, if I do the, I do a static int. So, and then, like you can see, and sometimes really slow, and uh, sometimes uh, through exception. So you can, let's uh, save that one, uh, save this one. Uh, let's go back uh, to the, here. If I call it, See, you can see the changes straight away. And uh, then it's uh, really slow, right? It's really slow. And uh, then it's, uh, sometimes uh, this one is uh, not working. So I demonstrate to you here, if I, so basically if, if uh, like uh, I use micro profile for tolerance, I say, okay, sometimes not working, no problem. I just uh, use retry. And uh, if it's not working, retry. And also sometimes it's really, uh, really slow. Uh, that's okay. If it's slow, if it couldn't have written within 100 milliseconds, I want uh, back out, uh, I want a timeout. Uh, if you use a timeout, it's always the best, best practice to use the asynchronous programming model. So which means uh, uh, when you invoke this operation, um, uh, it, you, you use a different uh, thread. So this is a uh, written I use, uh, like uh, I need to written a, a completion stage. So let me import uh, this one. Uh, with that, uh, and then here, obviously, uh, I use the completable future dot uh, completed uh, stage. So this is in Java 8. Uh, anybody use um, uh, Java 8 at the moment? 11? Okay, more 11 now. 17? Wow, that is surprising. That's really good. Okay, so you are all expert now. So here, see here, you can, you can see you fixed the problem, right? You can see here like you directly jumped 13, 14, directly jumped 16 because it timed out and then retried. So it's a, this is a tell you how to how easily to use micro profile con for tolerance to fix your application, fix your end instead of the uh, yeah instead of the back end. So also you could use uh, also fallback. So fallback is very uh, like uh, powerful. So basically you say okay for somehow if this is not working, uh, I want to call another operation called uh, fallback. So here, I just say fallback. So if you deploy to the cloud, this is really, uh, you should always think about uh, like uh, do the uh, fallback because the backend sometimes is not um, available. So it's, this is my fallback. Anyway, so this is uh, kind of the, um, uh, how to uh, uh, do the resilient microservices. And without doing any uh, coding or whatsoever, actually, uh, you can directly, like, uh, uh, even, uh, like, uh, go to the description if I do open API. So this is, uh, you can see this is Swagger uh, output. If I do UI, so you can see this is uh, automatic, you can see the get operation. 
you you can see the 200 or the 200 means and etc. And then if you want to add additional um, description like uh, what 200 means, what the 400 means, you can use the micro profile open API uh, annotation. So again, let me directly copy the um, uh, copy the like uh, what 200 means, what the 400 means. Uh, also, like um, okay. Input this, and then uh, it will directly like uh, reflected uh, in the uh, like uh, UI. It's updated. Let's go back. See, you can already see the do calling this do what uh, two hundred means, uh, four hundred means. You can try it out. So here you can see hello even, uh, and execute. So you can see it processed and uh, hello. So this is open API. And also, uh, I didn't um, uh, do any uh, other things uh, about uh, metrics. Uh, however, it's uh, automatically I get some uh, additional metrics. So in here is about CPU, about uh, timeout, uh, fault tolerance, uh, all this operation. And also, JXRS application is also got response time and traced. Uh, with that, you can even add more metrics. For example, this is a very, very important operation. Um, and you can even see, uh, you can say uh, simply times. Um, and then I will see name equals metrics. JB. Uh, JB. Uh, you do that. Uh, now, if you invoke this backend, uh, if you invoke invoke this, and then if you go back uh, to the metrics uh, again, uh, and then go back here, you can see metrics GBCN. Or oh, this is a kind of a gauge uh, and a counter and uh, the percentage and etc. All being traced. So this is kind of the, uh, the other, the other, the, the metrics, and uh, even for the health is um, for this uh, for the health operation. So basically, uh, you have a liveness and uh, readiness check. Uh, let's go back to the code here. So basically, how can you do the liveness? You directly do annotation liveness. And then you implement uh, the logic when it means it's live. You check your RAM uh, and etc. If it's uh, under a certain percentage, you will say, OK, it's not live anymore. For readiness, uh, it's uh, similar. You just implement uh, this uh, method. And for this one, maybe you just uh, check the database. If it's, uh, you can access it, and you say it's ready. So that's annotated with readiness, similarly uh, for startup. So this one directly tell Kubernetes actually your application started. So this one will be uh, only this one, the app, and then Kubernetes will check uh, live, uh, liveness and readiness. Uh, so this is kind of the, um, uh, the uh, health. Uh, the other thing is I mentioned about uh, the uh, secure, uh, the backend. So the, the security, so basically we say, OK, this is directly calling the security. So according to the secured backend. So this is secured backend is protected. So uh, for example, if I say here is a super, uh, I say only rules uh, uh, is belong to the um, super can access me. Now if I uh, call it, it's no longer work. So basically, uh, let me show you how can I fix it. So in the client, so basically the here in the client again, uh, like uh, this is uh, what a GWT uh, like a token looks like. So if you know it, the issue audience uh, and etc. So this is uh, directly is create that uh, like uh, you call the backend use the JXS rest, uh, rest uh, client uh, and uh, then is uh, you push the um, the token so other uh, authorization buried token. So the token content is here. You create a token. So you can see here the group is the user and protected. 
if I change here to be a super. So now if I go back here, see, I can invoke the backend. Uh, besides, uh, actually, you could even uh, uh, get hold of the token and inspect the token. So here, I can even inject my token. I can see token, JSON web token. Uh, so, and then I will say a token. And then I can even print it out. Uh, token. So if I say token dot get a raw token, I save this one. So let's go back here. So you can see all these gibberish uh, like uh, uh, characters because they are all like uh, uh, they are all encoded. So you can use uh, like uh, JWT.io so directly decode it. So if I directly uh, copy this, so you can see here after decoded, you can see the group is user and super and etc. This uh, this is all in clear text. So this is about security. The next one is uh, kind of the uh, quickly show you the the I have the Yaga client running. So basically, is uh, uh, I have this scene for J. If I see here, so basically I have been busy doing uh, uh, the secure course. So you can see here how long it, all this span is connected into one trace. It tell you uh, where the, uh, how much time is spent at which um, uh, like uh, invocations and etc. So this is a kind of quick tour about um, like uh, micro profile. Like how can you create this? So the next uh, uh, like uh, stage is about uh, like uh, you finish all, all this up. You finish all this up, and then the next thing, obviously, you just uh, uh, like uh, package it. Uh, you you just uh, uh, do a Maven verify, and uh, you create uh, the, uh, the the image verify. So it's uh, we will create an image. So after the image being created, uh, you just uh, do a, a Docker build, uh, uh, and then uh, with a with a tag. So uh, let me first uh, copy the Docker talk, Docker file. So if I go in here, I copy this Docker file. Uh, Again, to copy this Docker file. So you can see the Docker file is uh, is a kind of the there's a base image and uh, also is a copy your uh, kind of the the walls. So let me uh, do a build. So you just uh, do a Docker build. So this is. Uh, this is service A. So again, we do a Docker build. And then you do a, a C4G, and uh, then it's kind of the, uh, like a create a, another a Docker image. So it has been uh, some time with uh, do the optimization, optimization config.sh. Uh, and uh, so for this Docker file, we use Open Liberty and uh, Java 11, Open G9. So we use Open G9. And then you copy the configuration and also the uh, bootstrap dot properties. This is the pretty much the GBM settings. And then you copy the wall. Uh, and uh, then it's the kind of the, yeah. And then you run the config.sh. So it's a, this is a very uh, kind of uh, simple. And uh, again, you can do the um, uh, deployment uh, YAML file. So if I do deploy C4G. So show you the deployment uh, dot liberty. So basically, the, uh, in the Kubernetes deployment file, uh, 
So anybody know Kubernetes? OK, cool. So as you know, like uh, we create uh, two cloud and native applications. Basically, you will need to, to have the deployment uh, first, uh, and then uh, you create a service. Obviously, in the deployment, uh, I need to have a deployment uh, uh, for A and deployment for B. So here, you know, do you remember like uh, service A call into service B is a fully qualified class name uh, for the interface and slash mprest slash URL. But in the, because it's become an environment variable, it's only va legal character is a, is a kind of alphabet and underscores. So this is only the slash convert to be underscore, but microprofile config is smart. It can f figure all this out. And then you can see the, this backend is the service name, uh, C4G, app B, and uh, 9081. So this one is kind of the, again, like uh, you can specify the uh, conference uh, like uh, a name. For example, here, you can say GBCN uh, conf 2022. Again, for liveness probe, you use the plugin uh, health and live. The readiness, you plug in the uh, health ready. So uh, then it's similarly for the uh, deployment uh, B. And then you use this Docker image. And uh, then you create a service A, which is the kind of uh, like uh, the uh, node port. You create a node port. And then service B, you do a cluster IP, which is the only uh, visible in, inside your cluster. Where service A, you can be outside your cluster. Actually, previously, I have this uh, uh, all already kind of the deploy, deployed to Kubernetes. So it's automatic, it's running. If I do a kube control got services, um, kube control get services. So you can see it's on the uh, 381. Uh, if I go to 381, so here you can see this is uh, already like a, a deployed uh, working on the uh, like a Kubernetes Docker uh, like a desktop. So you can see GBCNCon 2021 2022 is uh, all up running. So this is kind of within like a 20 22 minutes. I got to create an application, got it uh, deployed to the Kubernetes. So uh, let's quickly go go back. So here I have. Uh, so here is a is an, oh, journey is not start here. Is a kind of also you know the service mesh service mesh. So you manage your services. Actually, with the macro profile, all these kind of the, uh, service mesh, like, like you still want this header to be propagated. Macro profile open tracing automatically do it for you. So it's, uh, you don't need to actually without any single line code, uh, and then, then it's uh, automatically native to even still. So this is kind of the big ecosystem. So I clearly like, um, uh, like, um, recommend um, people to uh, check it out. Like uh, I wrote a, a blog about uh, micro profile and a service mesh. If you search online, you can find it. So basically, is that you use the micro profile programming model, and then you can use your application in the uh, uh, service mesh then without any uh, problem. They worked out very well together. To finish with, and uh, this is uh, the book I uh, mentioned earlier, is a is on um, Amazon, so if you are interested uh, to use the uh, open standard, uh, check it out. It has uh, a lot of code snippet for you to uh, yeah, uh, refer to it. So with that, I think it's uh, also a few um, kind of useful links, microprofile.io. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, tutorials, like half an hour also, like a microprofile, uh, openliberty.io slash guides. So you can check it out. Any anything is it has uh, Kubernetes uh, and uh, Podman and all the micro profile and Jakarta E tutorials. Check it out. Uh, I have one more minute left. Are there any questions?
you're still not uh, Or use the microphone there. Yeah, yeah. What is your next? Oh, you, you can read it maybe. What is uh, what is your next uh, biggest uh, desire feature in Micro Profile you are going to release? Yeah, this is a great, uh, a great question. So at the moment, uh, we are uh, working on the micro profile telemetry. Do you know open telemetry? Anybody? Yeah, we are incorporating uh, open telemetry and even make it uh, very, very easily integrated with the micro profile apps. So it's uh, without writing any extra line code, you get uh, open, uh, like a, a open telemetry plugged in. Also, the other features, uh, uh, you know, the, the macro profile metrics. Also, previously, we used uh, the job wizard, uh, uh, based on job wizard. Uh, do you know, anybody know macrometer? Macrometer? Yeah, if you know macrometer, and now is a way kind of enable macrometer to be plugged in uh, to the macro profile metrics. Also, we also thinking about um, uh, open telemetry metrics as well. When is mature and et cetera, maybe is uh, uh, can make into micro profile as well. So in the next release, we are also based on the Jakarta E10 uh, core profile. It will be released very soon. So we want um, kind of rebase into Jakarta E10 and with all these kind of the new features. And the water space, and uh, we are innovating very fast. If you have any good ideas, get in touch. Um, yeah, you know my uh, Twitter is uh, Emily F. H. Jiang. So I would love to hear any uh, very uh, interesting ideas you have. Get in touch. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Thanks.